Blue Highways TV. More than a road, it's a state of mind. Unforgettable artists, treasured memories, and timeless country music. Stan Hitchcock's Heart to Heart Classics. How you doing, Edward? Good, Stan. Good How to see you, son. Thank you. I'm sweating. We broke a sweat. We broke a sweat. But you yeah, break, well, I bet you break a sweat in, in the wintertime. And you just a, you just <laughs> a natural, healthy, old, good old sweating farm. <laughs> well, boy. I don't know. I feel from like New like Jersey. I'm, that's right, from New Jersey. <laughs> I feel like I'm a walking reservoir sometimes. I, I run every day a few miles, you know, and uh, I don't know, maybe that's created this thing where I take in a lot of water and I let out a lot of water. Yeah. But so on some of my shows, you know, where the, if the conditions are hot uh, in some of the places we play, I'm literally, I come off and my shirt is soaked every single inch. Yeah. Even the buttons yeah. are wet, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Underwear, <laughs> socks, everything, you know what I mean? It's just... on, the, on, the, on the Branson Jam, we, we, uh, we got you even flicking a little sweat off. Yeah, well, I have on, these three the effect, little effect on the, on the rainy night. Works real well on rainy night. <laughs> Otherwise, big, it just kind of. I have these big three cornered picks, and when I get to that point where it says, you know, I feel the rain on my face, taste the rain on my lips, I just take a, you know, <laughs> some of that stuff like and flick it right off there, you know. A lot of people go, hey, you know. <laughs> some people go, come on. You know. Hey, we'll be right back with some more inside and, and personal on Eddie Rabbit on Heart to Heart. Stay right where you're at. <laughs> 
We'll break a sweat together, son. Next time we hear a real big scream, we'll say, oh, them doggone dinosaurs must be chewing on some folks again. <laughs>
Everything I've ever written has probably been written on this this guitar. It's not the best guitar in the world, and you can see it's <laughs> worn paper thin right here. My fingers hit it, you know, and the picks hit it, and it does got have all these stickers it on. It does it have a really thing. unique. Uh, yeah, and it ain't got no decorative appeal. I, I think I, I got nuts one day when I was back there, and I was very young, and I, I wasn't writing that day. I wasn't in the moods. I had these things. I just thought I'd just stick things all Better over. Better than putting them on your body, getting tattoos on your well, body. Like, yeah. Well, like I told you before, I said whoever made these stickers were the best in the world because you think in 25 years they'd have peeled up a little in one place, even on the little curved place here, but they haven't. They've just stuck real good. They just don't make them like that. If these. we can do everything in America like these stickers here, we'd That's be right. all right. That's right. Well, you you came. You didn't move here permanent that time, did you? Well, I came here first to see if this was the place I needed to be, yeah, or whether Nashville. I need to go out to California, or wherever, <clears> you know. Because <throat> uh, when you're young, you're not sure. So I came down to Greyhound bus first. Oh, I know what you're getting. <laughs> do you get this? My old Cadillac story. That's so funny. And I came down here for about six weeks to Nashville, uh, and I and I and I realized after six weeks that this is the place I needed to be. The kind of people you know, that I wanted to be with were here, the people that talk my language, the song people. And you, so and anyway, you, got, and you got a cut. You got a Roy Drusky cut the yeah, first time Yeah, I got time that working my way up to the bottom uh, cut. That's, and I went back after remarkable. about six weeks. Yeah, it is. And I thought, you know, everything was going to be great after that. I thought, gee, yeah. I'll just sit in the tub and write songs every day, you know? <laughs> just, you know, drive the money truck up to the back of my house and dump it in the yard. Just, but it didn't happen that way. You know, it was three years past before I got another song cut. But uh, I think, just to quickly get to that little thing you were saying, I went back after six weeks, back on a Greyhound bus, and realized I had to move there, and I told my folks I gotta go, you know. And they were sad to see me go and all, but uh, I said, oh, I'll be back, you know, in six months or nine or a year or whatever. But I took this old 63 Cadillac I had and threw all my junk in it, you know, into that rusty old bucket and uh, drove down to Nashville, and the poor thing, well, I pulled up in front of this apartment I rented before I got gone. It was an attic apartment, $80 a month, and pulled up in front of the, just made it. I mean, the thing was rattling and trapping and everything. I just pulled up right in front of the apartment and went, and just stopped, and it never started again. It had just enough in it to get down there, and that was it. That was it, and lucky I had this apartment on what they call Music Row, because back then, basically, most of the music business was in a four or five, six block yeah. area down there, and you could walk to it. So for the next couple of years, I walked <laughs> everywhere. But um, the Cadillac's probably still sitting there. The Cadillac, I, <laughs> there was a place called Bunch Nickel Cadillac, and I, I went over there, had it towed over there. See, I'd come down to Nashville with a thousand bucks that I'd saved up. That's all I had, you know, to make my little deal yeah, go. I had, to, I had to live, you know, I had to start making money when that thousand bucks ran out, you know, or I, or I was going to be finished. Um, uh, so uh, I went over to Bunch Nickel Cadillac. I said, what's it going to cost to fix my Cadillac? And they told me some outrageous price, you know, like $800 or $900. That would take everything I had, you know. So I said, what do you give me for it, you know? <laughs> and they gave, gave me, I think, two or $300 for it. I said, I'll take it. So, you know, here I was with twelve or $1,300 now, you know, no car, but it was okay. <laughs> I think it was better not having a car, you know, yeah, because of the walking around and, and everything, you know, was... What a different Nashville good. that was then, man. Yeah, it was. Yeah. What a different times. You know, it was like a small, I've said many times, it was, mm. like, it was like going to a small town within a town. The music community in Nashville in the 60s was really like a, just a small village within within the city of Nashville. And it, That's right. And you, it was a small you market out, then. You hung out with people and yeah. songwriters would, would feel free to swap their licks and their songs and sit down and, and, and share their music. and. Yeah. And we went over to the Opry on Saturday <coughs> night, and we'd go to Tootsie's, you hang know, afterwards. Back, hang around backstage. Hang out backstage yeah. there, or hang out with, in Tootsie's, you know, where you'd see people like Farron Young, you know, and uh, Porter Wagner, all these, you know, great people, you know, who were real hot at the time, you know, <laughs> You'd see Farron and Tootsie, I guarantee you. That, yeah. That was, that was Farron's hangout. Hey, we all were, uh, were <laughs> dipping and sliding, you know, uh, a bit back then. We were having a good time. Uh, what, what, what was the catalyst then that, that took you to the next, from a songwriter, and I knew you from a songwriter before I knew you as an artist. Well, you recorded. Uh, I recorded a song that you yeah. wrote, and uh, uh, had you know I. I and that was, was a great good song, cut, by the way. It's a great song, that and great, uh, you did a great job on it. Uh, you were you were a, a songwriter. What was the catalyst well, that took you from that to being an artist? Well, I always wanted to sing my own songs. You know, that was mm -hmm. something I always wanted to do. You know. <clears throat> And, and you but, came to town. You came to town just to the era when the singing songwriters started coming yeah. about too. That was a good good timing yeah. for you too. 
Yeah, I didn't know that. I don't know, uh, yeah, I don't know if the town was ready for me or I was ready for the town, but uh, it was a good time. Things didn't happen real quick, though, but it was the time of the singer-songwriter, you know, trying to get a deal. But, uh, but you know, when you first get to town, uh, you don't know anybody and you haven't got what they call a track record, so yeah. you have to give your songs away or write, you know, get into the production line of, you know, uh, of songs and, and give them to other people. And then when you get a, a name for yourself built up and you start to know the producers of the record companies and, uh, and this and that, and, and if you sing fairly well, Somewhere along the line, one of those producers is going to want to discover an act, you know, and, and you might be the one they want to discover, you know. And, and luckily uh, for me, that happened. A guy named Russ Miller came in and heard some demos I'd done on some songs, uh, and he was tied with Electra Records at the time. And he came in, and I remember him listening through the door of a studio that my friends and I were just sitting in listening, you know, to that. I remember him knocking on the door and uh, saying, what is that music in there? What are you playing? Oh, just something we did in the studio late last night. And he said, could I hear it? And he listened to it. And when he got through listening to the, uh, the two songs we did, he said, he said three things. He said, I want you, I want those records. And he said, we're going to make you a big star. Hmm. And uh, all that was missing it's was like a pretty big good cigar, deal to me. you know? <laughs> it's like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when you're a kid and someone says that to you, man, you know, <clears throat> you know you're, just, uh, yeah. you're just off. And, and, but he followed through with his word. Two weeks later, a contract came down. And one of those uh, two songs uh, came out. Um, it went to 17 in the Billboard charts, surprisingly enough. And then he said, OK. He said, uh, go do an album. And so we had our first album. And the first album we ever had out for folks who may be collectors of these things. I don't know, there may be two or three out there. Uh, I was holding a rabbit. Uh, you know, I went with the photographer's idea. Hey, why don't you hold a rabbit? Your <laughs> name's Eddie Rabbit, you know? And, I, and back then I said, oh, OK. <laughs> Today I would have said, get out, you know? <laughs> making fun of my name like that. <laughs> Big picture of a rabbit on the back, but it but it was a good thing, actually, because it got a lot of people's attention. Well, tell about the team, the team that was put in that early Well, that it was uh, uh, two other fellows worked with me, uh, guys by the name of Even Stevens and David Malloy. Uh, Even Stevens and I met and uh, started writing together, and uh, then we met David, who was a, a producer, writer, uh, and they were talented uh, guys, and we got together and, and had a long run of, uh, of writing uh, hits, and. Uh, and production hits and uh, a great time. I'll do another one. Let's do another one in that, in that era. You want to do one from that area? I'll, I'll play a little bit of a ballad that I always... It was the second song we ever had out, and I'd wished I'd waited on this song because I, had a, I have a feeling if we had put this out after we had hit a little harder, that this would have been a number one rec uh, record, too. It, went to, it was the second record we had out. Uh, the first one went to 17. This one went to 12. So we were breaking yeah. in. But it, uh, it's a song called Forgive and Forget. And it goes uh, like this. And I love the story. It says, when a man cheats on a woman, it's understood he's just a man. But when a woman cheats on her man, no one forgives. I drove her out into the night With teardrops in her eyes And only now I realize The fool I've been Why couldn't I just hold her And try to understand her I said things that I regret Why couldn't I just love her And say it didn't matter Why couldn't I forgive and forget Want to hear the rest? That was one of my favorite songs you did, man. It's not her fault, she slipped one time She never was the cheating kind But when a woman's unsatisfied She's bound to roam And I got mad, I just saw red I never heard a word she said what I'd give to bring her back here in my arms Why couldn't I just hold her And try to 
understand her Instead I said things that I'll regret Why couldn't I just love her And say it didn't matter Why couldn't I forgive and forget Why couldn't I Forgiven for I agree. That's one of the best songs you wrote. In the I like that. I, uh, I, I think that there's a real, uh, a realistic message yeah. there. You know, yeah, and it's very timely. Even I mean, the song. Yeah, I, I very... think it's one of those songs. I think that will always uh, strike a chord about man and woman and their relationship. Yeah. yeah. The July-August issue of RFD-TV the magazine is making the summer sizzle with hot topics and programming for the entire family. See what U.S. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack had to say about homegrown energy and fueling America's future. In the What's New section, you'll find out that the King of the Cowboys will continue to make his appearance here on RFD-TV and the Roy Rogers Show. The Rural Lifestyle section will surely make you smile with working dogs, your best friend on the farm. Also, check out how to preserve and research your farm's history using the latest technology available. Or find out how fun it is to upcycle using old glass, plates, and bowls. The Country Music and Entertainment section features the man behind RFD TV's In the Bunkhouse, Red Stiegel. And don't forget to help guide the future of RFD TV by filling out the new 2011 viewer survey. You'll find all this and much more including regular features, program grid, auction schedule and viewer mail. So renew or subscribe today. Subscribe to RFD TV the magazine and get a free denim cap along with your six exciting issues throughout the year. A one-year subscription is just $30. To order by credit card, call 888-657-3388. Online, go to rfdtv.com and click Magazine. Or send a $30 check or money order to RFDTV the Magazine, P.O. Box 78546, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. Keep up with Rural America and place your order today. At the corner of Music Row and Memory Lane by Stan Hitchcock, a backstage pass to Nashville's music history and the superstars it created. Rare stories about Tammy Wynette, Mel Tillis, Ernest Tubb, Garth Brooks, and many more. It's 1961. From Nashville, Tennessee, in the Ryman Auditorium, it's the Grand Ole Opry. Let her go, boys. Packed with over 100 rare photos, at the corner of Music Row takes country music fans along for the ride of making it big in Nashville. I hollered for Loretta to wake up, because I sure didn't want her to miss our being captured by a UFO. This book is a must for any country music fan. Order now and receive a free music CD. All for $24.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 866-454-2488. Send your check or money order for Stan's book to Blue Highways TV, 111 Chival Drive, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37075. When did the Elvis cut come about? The Elvis cut came uh, after I was in town about two and, and a half have, years. Had you, was you already re recording or was you No, still no, I wasn't recording. Infection. I wasn't doing it. I didn't start recording until uh, 75, was it? Something like that, 76. So you were just still just writing and... and yeah, just a little, little rabbit then, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just writing and uh, I had had some songs cut. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, it's funny, I had that working my way up to the bottom with Roy yeah. Drusky and... Uh, and then a little later on, a guy named Billy Grammer. You remember the guitar oh, player? And yeah. he had to travel on. I've laid around and played around this old town. He recorded a song of mine called Bottles. And yeah. it was a funny little song. It had four verses in it. And it's how bottles affect someone's life. You know, when you're young, you have a tendency to write certain songs like that. I was talking to Billy Joe Schaefer once, and he had a few of those in his, in his, uh, his catalog of songs. Yes, a few did. of those murder, suicide type of weird, you know kind of songs, and I don't know why when you're young, I guess you want to shock someone, you know, and try to get their attention with a song. You end up, you know, going from these kind of crazy songs right to love songs where you, 
you know, where you should have been all the time. But. Do, do the Kentucky Rain. Kentucky Rain? Yeah. This was a song that... This is a song that um, became Elvis's 50th gold record. Yeah. It's a song that made my mom and dad real proud. Uh, my mom and dad come from Ireland, you know, and my dad worked in the boiler room of an oil refinery when I was growing up. He didn't make a whole lot of money. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got by, and I was just a, another long-haired kid with a guitar with a lot of big ideas and not a lot to show for it, you know. So uh, when this, when Elvis cut this song, it was a big deal around our house. I mean, my folks went out bragging all over the neighborhood, and I was as right well behind them. As well they should. Yeah, and uh, Great song. it went a little like this. Uh, that, uh, that chord there is a... Uh, Thank you I'm so sure much. I'm sure you know because you're, you're an excellent guitar <laughs> yes, player. Uh -huh. You can uh, put your cape on, do it in D, and go from D to A minor. I think. What, no, what are you doing? You can. I'm in C. You need to go. No, Where do you have, need to go? No, I'll do it in C. You'll do it in C. See, then go to D, G minor. You go to D, G minor. See, right? you'd have to go clear oh, up I here. Oh, I see. You have to wait. <laughs> I want to sing a real macho song now. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Just I'll go C you. to G minor, and okay. the rest is just fall in place. C. Seven lonely days and a dozen towns ago. I reached out one night and you were gone Don't know why you'd run What you're running to or from All I know is I want to bring you home So I'm walking in the rain Thumbing for a ride On this lonely Kentucky back road I've loved you much too long My love's too strong To let you go Never knowing What went wrong dun, dun, dun. Kentucky rain keeps pouring down And up ahead's another town That I'll go walking With the rain in my shoes Searching for you In the cold 